A lot of times when artists experience an unexpected slowdown with their nuke scripts or excessive memory usage, it's due to the inefficient use of the bounding box. The bounding box is often referred to in other applications as data window, domain of definition, region of interest, crop box, crop window. These are all different terms for the same concept. And in this tutorial, we'll have a look at this concept and at the nuke specific workflow. So looking at this car render here, you'll see that the area we're actually interested in is pretty small compared to the overall format size. So looking at the bounding box info in the lower left corner here in the status bar, we'll see it starts at 00, which is lower left, and ends at 1024576, which is up here. In other words, the bounding box in this example is as big as the format, and that means we're wasting a lot of resources. Let's have a look at what a heavy defocus node does to this. You'll see how the defocus node wastes a whole lot of time and resources to generate black pixels. So this is not really what we want. And um, also let's have a look at the memory usage by selecting the node and going to edit node info viewer. And that tells us that the defocus node at the moment uses 2.28 megabytes of memory to achieve the effect. Now let's go back and make that bounding box a bit more efficient using a crop node. If you don't check the reformat knob in the crop node, the crop node essentially is a set bounding box node, if you will. If you're a shake user, it's similar to the set DOD node. So let's limit the bounding box a bit more to the area we actually want to process. I usually look at the alpha channel and crank up the viewer gamma to make sure I'm not cutting off any transparent edges. It should be all right. And um, let's go back to just about the same zoom level and reattach the defocus node and you'll see that this process is a lot faster now. Let me just step through time a little bit to make sure we're not looking at buffered images. So that's a lot better. And also if we update the info you'll see that we're now using about a third of the memory that was required before. Obviously when dealing with animated footage setting a bounding box like this is not really an option. But there's tools in Nuke that will help you with this and one of them is called Curve Tool and lives in the image menu. The Curve Tool will generate various animation curves for you based on certain image analysis and in this case we can grab a curve type that will do an auto crop for us. So I'll set this to auto crop and usually I set the channels to be analyzed to only the alpha channel and we'll just let it process the whole thing. Let's just do the first 50 frames. And what this node is doing is it will now analyze the extents of the alpha channel and give us a nice snug bounding box fitting right around it, which you can see if you go to the auto crop data tab. The node itself doesn't do any cropping, so we'll still have to append a crop node and then copy or link the resulting animation into it. I'm just gonna hold shift and drag the animation icon over into the crop node to copy the animation curves and now I can get rid of the curve tool itself and the crop node will deliver our efficient bounding box over the course of the animation. Because this is quite a helpful workflow, there's actually a Python script that ships with Nuke that does the same exact thing. So if you select your image and hit X, switch over to Python and just type in Nuke scripts, which is the package dot autocrop, followed by an empty set of parentheses Hit OK, and this Nuke script now does exactly what we just did manually. It'll process the image sequence through the curve tool and then replace the curve tool with an actual crop that holds the resulting animation. Obviously, this is something you might want to tie into your interface or even assign a hotkey to. Another way of assigning a animated bounding box is simply by rendering out EXRs. If you run EXRs, you have the option to auto crop images at render time. Now this adds quite a bit of overhead to your render and more memory consumption. So I would not recommend this for the interactive workflow, but rather for batch processing, such as using Nuke as a post render job to your CGI image renders if your CG renderer can't produce a bounding box. So if you check auto crop and run out anything out of Nuke, let me just run the first 10 frames. Nuke will automatically assign the most efficient bounding box it can find at render time. So if we pull this back in, car B box here, you'll now find the car has a bounding box. These are some basics for creating a bounding box. Now let's have a look at managing and modifying an existing bounding box. 
The two nodes that are usually used in the most wasteful way in Nuke are the Bezier node and the Merge node when it comes to bounding boxes. So let's have a look at those two. First I'm going to crop into this area here because we have an oversized render so I'll just attach a reformat real quick and we don't want to resize, we want to crop into the center and we want to crop to a size, oops, to a box of 1024, 576. So that brings us back to our 1024 format, but you can see that we're now losing the data that was contained within the bounding box before, so make sure to check the preserve bounding box knob. So if we now added a camera shake, for example, we would pull in useful pixels rather than black. Now let's pretend I want to create a quick Bezier node to color correct the back of the car, for example. Just going to chuck that into some random layer. Let's just put it into depth. And you can see that the more I expand the Bezier node, the more the bounding box grows within the format. It'll clip to the format at the bottom, but within the format it will grow the bounding box as big as it has to to encompass the Bezier node. In this case, because I only want to use it as a mask for my render, this is pretty wasteful already. The reason this happens is that the default value for the Clip2 knob is set to Format, which means the Bezier node is allowed to grow the bounding box as large as the format. In this case, it's probably better to set it to Incoming B box, which means the incoming bounding box will dictate the maximum extent that is allowed. So you can see that now we're keeping the incoming bounding box and we can move the Bezier around and it won't affect the bounding box. Let's just have a look at the other few modes. For example, the no-clip mode will not clip the bounding box at all and depending on how big the Bezier node is, the bounding box will always grow to make sure it's within the data window or bounding box or crop window or region of interest. So this probably only makes sense if you are creating RGB content with your Bezier that needs to be preserved at all times. Other modes include the union of the bounding box with the format and the intersection. So if we look at the union, it will grow as large as the incoming format and the incoming bounding box together. So at the bottom we are now allowed to go as far as the bounding box and to the right we are allowed to go as far as the format. And the same is true for the other directions because what we see here is the union of both format and bounding box. and the last one would be the intersection. Obviously this will crop the parts outside of the format from the bounding box so we lose data outside. So in other words, every time you create a Bezier that draws straight into some image stream, always make sure that the Clip2 knob is set to the most efficient setting. In my case, it will be the B-Box setting.